Good morning, Internet. Except it's Blessing. 745 at night. Blessings to you all. Huzzah, <laughs> huzzah, and a happy Thanksgiving to those of you who live in America, because I'm pretty sure we're the only people who celebrate Thanksgiving on this day. No, Canadians celebrate it, too. They celebrate it like a weird month earlier, though. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. I guess a polar bear or something? I don't know. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I, hey, don't you know I made the hockey pucks for dinner, don't you know? <laughs> oh, look, another former British province we've ticked off. Yeah, we gotta stop. <laughs> uh, anyway, for all you Americans, welcome. Howdy. And for the rest of you guys, too, welcome. Just not happy Thanksgiving, but also a happy Thanksgiving to you. Should you come to America so you can participate in Thanksgiving? <laughs> Get Immigrants and... I like, yes. Get y'all some turkey. <laughs> Stuffing. It's all about the size. Well, see, here's the thing. Do you actually like turkey? I do. I do, too. I do. It's like, people be like, oh, I don't care about the turkey. It's all about the size. I'm like, well, the turkey is, you know. It. It. Yeah, yeah no. It's like. Dang. What are you going to do? We eat, like, toast and jelly beans and popcorn, you know? <laughs> what blockhead cooked all this? <laughs> uh, well. We have gathered ourselves coming out of our food comas, or a day out at this point, um, to talk about animated movies and the like. And the uh, like, yeah. I, I, I believe it's just, we were just sort of talking about the topic of animation in general, which is only appropriate because this is the day of the year when we stampede each other to buy better TVs to watch better animated movies. <laughs> so... Matthew, you being the resident movie expert, uh, I'm going to let you take it from here. Okay, well, I love this. Uh, I do love animation, and there's uh, reasons for that. Uh, this is a little bit of film theory, but uh, I think uh, it tends to be cheaper to do things in animation. Like, one classic example is, like, imagine if Iron Giant was done in live action. I can't. Oh, wait, it was called Transformers. <laughs> No. Direct... It doesn't count, though. Could you imagine it... the budget if, if Iron Giant was directed by Michael Bay? <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Michael Bay should direct every romance movie from here on out. <laughs> but in 1998, I mean, come on, that's kind of why they did it. Yeah. Brad Bird, I think it's the first movie that Brad Bird ever directed. Really? It might have been. It's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, because I can't really think of anything else. Well, he might have helped on... No, never mind. Mm. I think everyone helped on Brave Little Toaster, but that's not true. Brave Little Toaster. I was taking this way back. Retro. That, this is our first episode. Yes, it was. First episode was about Brave Little Toaster. I brought it up. But another reason I like uh, animation is the auteurship that you can bring to it. And that's like the idea of one person being like the author of a movie. Mm. Like... Like, the, being the author of the book, like, you just can control every aspect of it. You don't have to, like, rely on actors who can screw up lines or losing on the location, having to secure a location, or... Mm -hmm. You gotta know people can draw stuff, but, like, what's that to, like, having to secure a train station, have an overhead shot where the train is pulling in and the main character has to get off and not trip over the tracks and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm. I've, I, 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 I have to agree with you on that one. I think the authorship possible in animation is so great. Uh, like, I've always thought, like, if I ever wanted to make a movie out of something, excuse me, out of something that I wrote, it would, it would definitely be animated. Yeah, I mean, like, that's, I would love to see an animated film done by you. I'd like to see my, uh, I'd like to see my senior project novel get turned into an animated movie. I can see it being like a Muppet thing. But really? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, to some point or another. I would, I, I could, I could see it being done, and maybe like the. I mean, not like Muppet, but like, like Jim Henson's like Dark Crystal, like very high, high tech. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe. That was a fantasy. I don't know if you ever watched that. You might that took a fantasy. I actually haven't watched it, but I am aware of it. I think it's on Netflix, but don't quote hmm. me on that. I should look that up. Hmm. Yeah, if you got time. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so. But that's what I. That's another thing. Um. I also think it's uh easier, like personally, maybe easier for it. Could, you could theoretically have a person do a ten minute animated short better than you can have one person do a ten minute live action short. I mean, I'd rather do animation than like, 
But it actually been just one person, but that's what I think. So it's better at condensing information. Maybe that too. I mean, like, I think you can play with time better. The flow that's of true. things. That's true. You can play with time better. I think the faster you speed up, you kind of have to, like, process more detail, so I wouldn't do it, but, like... You could also do... There's also actually interesting movies that are done without um, background landscapes, believe it or not. Interesting. One French movie, I think, of, like, a bear and a, some other animal that did it pretty well. A bear and some other animal. Sounds truly and rivetingly French. <laughs> no. French have interesting animated movies, but I'm not here to talk about that. I actually have seen a French animated movie. It was actually an animated... I don't remember what it was. It was sometime during freshman year in college. I need to re-watch more animation stuff. People think I'm the movie bo guy, but I'd, I'd rather be also known as the, the animation guy. I, I mean, I think in the end, I, I can't do animation. I wouldn't take mm. time out of my days to do so. But more like something like how Tim Burton and Terry Gilliam, they, they like take their money... And apparently, um, Guillermo del Toro does this too. But like, he takes mm. money to film their anime. He just like sees great ideas and like kind of crowdfunds them with his own money. Interesting. I like to do that someday. Crowdfunding with your own money. I believe that's called investing. Or being the producer. It depends on how you look at True. it. True. Um, I do have a favorite animated show. Okay, I'm listening. Um, it's not Adventure Time, even though I think that. I haven't watched it in a long time, and I think I had to watch it to really make... Again, this has to do with the fact that, like, you had to watch a lot of the show to, like, like it. Okay. Like, I haven't touched, like, 98% of good anime. That's fair. The last anime I literally watched was Neon Evangelion Genesis, or whatever. Oh, you watched it? I watched, like, two-thirds of it. Okay, I didn't know you'd watch <laughs> I wanted to get to the movie, and I still haven't. Yes. Yes. Outer space <laughs> Catholic robots. <laughs> and the aliens of the Reformation. <laughs> <laughs> the 95 this is <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna go with all the equivalents that would be in the show. <laughs> but uh alright, so But that show that is my favorite so far even though I really wonder if it could be topped, is uh, The Amazing World of Gumball. Oh, interesting. I know you do talk about it quite a bit. Um, Yeah, I've only started watching it, which, again, this is not a good sign that it'll stay on the top, but I hope it'll be in my top 10 in, I don't know, 10 years or so. Um, I've heard... There's this one guy he wrote for Gig Culture, mm -hmm. uh, Bob Chap Chipman. I don't know if you heard of him. Okay. Well, he called it the actual... Possibly the actual heir to The Simpsons, which I think is possibly true. Hmm. Um, I think it's kind of more like if Furry's trying to make The Simpsons and like try to do no. like and maybe do like what would you think that would be then? What do I think it's a spiritual successor to, or what would I think if the Furries tried to make, Furries tried to make The Simpsons? Like what what it's more like because I think it's the Furries did Simpsons and like made more like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Mm, okay, I, ha I have several prepared responses. You can just get tell us now. I mean, I, I'm not familiar enough with The Simpsons to decide what there's whether or not Gumball is an appropriate spiritual successor. I just simply don't know. I kind of missed the period when they were popular. Uh, they say that the best part of it was the 89 through 95 when I watched seasons t 1 and 2, so I'm up to 1991, and I would say that it, it kind of, I see kind of why he's, say, he's saying that. Yeah, I, I see, I, I kind of missed that era, so, and I never really watched it, so I can't really say as to that. But you can't say it's the fur. it's like if furries made The Simpsons. Yeah, I, I, I could not validate that claim. You're in a position to do so, but that's that's fine. But oh. You are you are a journalist, but <laughs> I I yeah, this is true. I I, I I am I am indeed a journalist. I can I can journal occasionally, <laughs> and by that I mean I write sarcastic articles articles about dating while hiding behind lamp posts and spying on people. <laughs> Actually, that's the uh, gumball episode I just watched. But anyway, um, well, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of which, you need to pick up. A Check. Shoot. I forgot what day payday was. Okay, writing that out. Anyway, um, 
one thing that I think people don't notice unless and it took me a while to get this, but like they have like it's like a level layer animation. They have like everything in there. They have like live action, they have mm. CGI, they have tradition not traditional, but they have like written like on sketch pads. Like it, it's like digitized traditional yeah. sort of. Um they have stop motion animation. Like every character is like its own um character design and like sometimes like and they go off character they go, go off design a lot. Like they have like SpongeBob style gross ups. Mm-hmm. Where it's like the, the ch- face changes, like it's amazing. Like you actually have to pay attention that certain certain episodes take like three months. Like no kidding. They even had the guy, they even had the "Don't hug me, guys, I'm scared" do an episode if that can be believed. Hmm. They they didn't puppet ha, ha, for like for a whole third of the episode. So, and they actually launch a mini. Um, spinoff series actually about it that's on on demand actually. Wow, I had no idea. I had no idea that Gumball was such a such a deep pool for us to draw from. That didn't make any sense. I, I basically I, I I never thought of the Amazing World of Gumball critically. Is what I'm trying well, I, to say. I, well, I don't think it's deep like the way J.J. Keeley would... Like, J.J. Keeley wouldn't have this on his list. But I think it's got a lot of psychological realism that it shares, like, with how, The Simpsons. How dare you break rate ranks, you Keeley and you? Where's the psychological <laughs> realism in Cat Mom's reaction to her children? You're seeing where I'm going with this. That was a low-flying plane. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Um, I don't know if anybody was able to hear that, but a plane... It's like a plane buzzed in my house. I don't even know if the oh. mic picked it up. The mic didn't pick I it didn't up. Hear it. Oh, no, that's weird. Uh, I thought you meant like an analogy that uh. No, no, there was actually was, a... like, that was low hanging fruit or something. No, no, but I was saying that I was like, yeah, no, oh yes, psychological realism. But then again, there is one thing I have to say about animation: is animation lets you get away with so much more. Yeah, I think it lets you show so much more character in animation. And it, it, it also gives you, um, I think it makes believing the fictional dream much easier. Like, yeah, definitely. I think, I think, you know, you go more open-minded into a cartoon world. So that's true. I, I think also cartoons are easier to communicate across age spectrums. Yeah, because I think because even old people like animated TV shows. Just, yeah, I think so. Just so, my one grandma wa- watches Game of Thrones, so but that's, that's kind of it's got cartoony. It's uh, cartooning the way it's badly written. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so, side note: it's really not a very good book or show. I I'm sorry. I I, 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 mean, I think I think Game of Thrones and, and just a side note, Game of Thrones and Walking Dead will probably be on and make money forever because like the book the book series have not been finished yet. It's just so pulpy. If they could do anything with it, it's. I won't disagree with the pulpiness on the Walking Dead front because that is just the same running storyline to continue. For Game of Thrones, it's almost like. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like... (sighs) There's a world. (laughs) And he had some really good ideas for that world. It's almost like he had a bunch of good ideas without a story. And the story (laughs) seems to be just kind of going along trying to pull in as many of the good ideas as it can while moving forward. So it's like, it's like, like, yeah, oh, that's a cool idea, and that's a cool idea, and that's a cool idea. But it's like, I am going to grab them all together and hold them together by political conflicts that nobody understands and Who cares about lots and lots of random sex. <laughs> that's basically Game of Thrones. I, I, um, I think that's another reason why um, I like uh, Amazing World Gumball, even though apparently Ben Bokelay, Ben Bokelay, the guy who started, I think he departed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like a show that you can kind of take it anywhere, including the fact that you don't have to center around Gumball and Darwin. 
there, there is something to be said that, that I do, like, on a long-running, like, on a long-running show with some crit crit critical success, you kind of can almost go on Netflix and hit shuffle, and you know it'll be okay, even though there is kind of an overarching story. Yeah. Like, I, I have one show. Probably better than, like, Doctor Who, because I like the character development of Gumball. Well, I, maybe not psychological, but it's, like, as... Like what can we do with these characters? Kind of development. The situational, the situational flexibility of the characters. Yes. Yeah. And I, I mean, eventually, I think you'd have the Simpsons effect where I just it would like it would pale in quality, but it almost looks like from looking at the first and second season, it's actually like really good now. Are they still making the Simpsons like new ones? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they are. Oh dear. But I actually feel better for the Gumball because one of my favorite episodes I think is semi recent. Have you ever seen the Money? The episode of the Money. Describe it to me as possible I might have, because the title um, sounds familiar. So Richard lost money by converting to gold and threw it in the ocean, and they figure this out by not being able to pay for a meal at Joyful Burger. And then at the end, their house gets repossessed, and then they start having the world, literally the world of Elmore falling apart into more and more primitive forms of animation which in turn like shows the audience how the whole show works in development phase and to the point where they're literally stick figures on notepad and paper through a, until the end where like they decide to make a really tacky 80s style commercial and the episode ends this is why i love the show because and there's great stuff before that and it's great um inventiveness throughout it and it sounds really familiar i feel like i have seen that just like a long time ago and nicole freaks out the entire episode including this like literally minute long insult rant against the one dolphin guy <laughs> that sounds about right i feel like I've, i feel like i've watched it it's i'm surprised you don't watch more of it i what do you want from me there you go well, I'm sure you have your own favorite, but I won't get to that. Um, also, in uh, summary, Carrie yes. Kruger is my favorite because of reasons. The ghost, the little emo ghost character. Wait, which, which is your favorite? Carrie Kruger, the little ghost character. That is valid. Okay, and Wait. Nicole is my favorite. And Nicole is my second favorite because Karate Kitty Mommies. <laughs> uh, yeah, she, Nicole is my favorite character. It's, and it's, it's funny. It's like it's like she, she she she's a cross between like Bruce Lee and the mom from Foxtrot. Interesting. Okay. And do you have a favorite show? A favorite animated TV show. A movie, because I have a movie. But in case we have okay, time. Okay, so you have a show and a movie. Yes, but in case we have time. Okay, yeah. okay. So I. Uh, I actually only picked a movie, but I, I do have a show that I, I, okay. could, I could definitely talk about. I think I know what it is, but... Do you think you know it? I'm actually curious. Is it, What do you think it is? Bojack Horseman. Interesting choice. It's not my favorite animated show. I, th I think it's by far... I think it's definitely the deepest animated uh, show. But for me, my favorite, I thought, was... Um, my favorite animated show is probably... Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. That was that, 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 that was a pretty big one. Let's just say I never watched that for certain reasons, but now you're making me want to watch it. <laughs> it had so many VAs in it. They had, like... Tara Strong, I know, was in it. Probably uh, mm -hmm. Jess Harnell is another good guess. Because Jess Harnell and, and um, Tara Strong are in everything. I, I I don't I'm not sure who, but it was, it was it was it was a fun show. It was very whimsical. Oh, do you know also how you know a, a show's good? How do you know? If Jess Harn, if um Weird Al Yankovic cameoed at least in one episode. <laughs> oh well, I'll keep that. I'll, I'll make a note of that. Yeah, he did Uncle Grant. Well, except for Uncle Grandpa, I guess he did. Oh, that was not a good show. He did Adventure Time as Banana Man. He did My Little Pony: Friendship Is Magic. That makes did... too much sense. Um, I think, I'm trying to think what else he did. He might have done Super Super Friends on, on Adult Swim. He, he did, he did everything. I used to actually conf confuse him with Jess Harnell. Really? Which, yeah, if you look at their hair, you'd kind of see why. Yeah. Oh, really? Huh. Oh, I, I'm, I don't know, but I, I really like Foster. I think your dad, 
I really liked Foster's because it was it was funny. It was it was upbeat. Uh, the animation style was really cute, and also um, I I read their Christmas episode where where uh, Blue was convinced that. It was about the ghost of Bob Marley coming around to visit people. So he's going from room to room. Is really, I am the ghost of Bob Marley. He's just, I know it's stupid. And, 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 and it's such a stupid joke, but it kept getting me. It was a funny show because it, it was a lot of times like, it was like, it was really about, you know, a kid growing up and then trying to keep one foot in the imaginary world, but there's one foot still in, like, the real world. Yeah, because it didn't, um, the, there was one episode where, like, the, his older brother, like, pranked him that they were, like, moving to Ohio or something, and then they were, like, kind of, the whole mansion freaked out or whatever. That was, like, that was the first season. That was, like, that was in the first 12 run episodes. Really, I didn't know. Yeah, first run twelve episodes. There was there were many more episodes. I'm trying to remember. There's also one where um, the guy where the guys are trying to stop the one for like the, like the uh, the caretaker. They're trying to stop it from going on a date with somebody. So they dress up and they go out to somebody named Orlando Bloom. That was just that was just that was one of my favorites. That that was, it was it, it was a goofy show, but I I, I enjoyed it. And like you it never got too daring with the animation, but for its kind of for its treatment of the fantastical, it's like the the way it handled itself was it took itself seriously, but not nearly too seriously. It was like. So I for for me that one that one will always be a warm place for me. I just like the the mansion because I just I still love yeah. huge mansions. Well, you know we do house tours now. This so. is this 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 this, this is true. We I also like the whole idea of like kind of going back to for some reason Muppets from Space things of comes to mind of like just a bunch of friends who live in the same huge mansion and have their own <laughs> crazy room with all everything happening and like the next door is like Kermit living. I you ever watch you, you watched that movie, didn't you? I actually haven't watched that one yet, but I know exactly what you're talking about though. The mansion and Yeah, it's like like it's 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 part of the whole like thing. It's like Yeah, yeah so that that one for me is gonna be a high point. So then, do you want to move on to movies? Yeah. Um. How about you take a guess what it is first? Because since you guessed in mine, your favorite animated movie. Hmm. Is it? It's made, not about. Is it made by? Say, it's, not, it's not about Carrie Kruger. <laughs> is it made by Americans? Yes, it is. And I'm not going to answer that. I already gave it away. It's not. It's um. Oh gosh, I have I ever watched it with you? No, oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. How about that? Is it one of the like the made for TV My Little Pony movies? I'm not gonna say what it is. No hints. <laughs> um. Okay, let's see. The Americans. I didn't say that necessarily. Okay, not made by Americans. Canadians, British, Japanese. It's it's not made by Studio Mi. It's not made by um. It's not a Miyazaki film. Is it? Oh, I just guess. Oh, okay. I uh, yeah, 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 mm, Castle in the Sky. Know. No, uh, Spirited Away. Spirited Away is your favorite. Yeah, and now that I'm thinking about it, it doesn't have to do with Carrie Kruger, but uh, it does have ghosts in it. It does. So I, I half lied. Half lied. I guess I have a thing for ghosts or something. <laughs> Actually, interestingly enough, uh, you know what? We'll find that out later. Um, but you could tell me later, or or, it, or is it about um, that one? You did write about ghosts for uh, a long essay. Y yes, you you are correct. I did I did write a story about Japanese about Japanese ghosts um, for a essay. So if anybody has any Japanese ghost questions, I may be qualified to answer a couple of them. <laughs> Probably not most. Wow. So you're the uh, Tokyo Ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> more like, more like, more like Tokyo. Oh, brother. 
Tokyo Fool. Tokyo Fool. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Like a drag racing team. <laughs> we, are, we are the Tokyo Fools. <laughs> Initial D. <laughs> How does that even relate to cars? Like initial. They could drive like like crappy converted Scions. <laughs> they got converted to like drag racing. So like, that made a with like drag drag racing with cardboard on a dollar budget. Show up in your grandma's Buick Roadmaster. Who are you? We're the Tokyo Fools, and who are you? Oh, <laughs> uh, we got a. That'll be our Fox animated show. It'll be like. In the Hill Speed Racer. You get the Hill Speed With the dog who runs the family. No. Going back to our old cunts. No. Uh, oh my goodness. So what was so a what about Spirited Away speaks to your soul? Um, it's well, first of all, it's an original um it's an original concept. It's kind of sort of it might have been uh influenced by um Alice in Wonderland, but I really don't know about that. It'd be kind of like Alice in Wonderland reverse, except not. Kind of, if you ever... Have you watched it? I haven't. I, I've seen parts of it. Like, I'm aware of its plotline and stuff. You need to watch the full thing, I think. We should. Christmas um, break. Apparently... Yeah. Apparently, um... Uh, Maizaki just wanted to write a better film for Tender Girls, according to him. So... Okay. Funny how it just came out of that. No and, your demographic. Well, with that kind of attitude, you can get the first Academy Award for an animated film. Or an anime, rather, from what it's I understand. Good movie. Highest grossing film in Japan. It beat uh, uh, Titanic and uh, what's the other movie he came out in 97 by Miyazaki. The, um, the one about the wolf girl and medieval Japan. Uh, Princess Mononoke? Yes, Princess Mon, okay. That's now, have you watched have have you watched that? I haven't. We have, we we you, you need to come over and watch Studio Ghibli films back to back. Actually the reason why I like Spirited Away because it's not preachy like Mononoke. Mm. Mononoke is just so preachy. Mm. It doesn't even make sense. But that's another story. Another story um, for another day. Overrated movies? <laughs> no. Ooh. Uh, I wouldn't say it's overrated, but Maybe, maybe for a raid, I can see myself. But anyway, um, the animation in that, um, it took years. It's like Pixar. Like, yeah, so many moving things. And I don't know, if, I, I did the traditional for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um, you had so many things. And from what I understand, like, you know, Miyazaki says, you know, he wrote, directed, and he didn't, and he storyboarded, but he also, like, he went to the individual animators and, like, made sure, like, their, the character design for every single character was, like, on point. Interesting. Like, he's got, like, that workaholic attitude, but applied to movies. It's it's actually really amazing if you look of like, what he did during the production of Spirited Away, and really all his films, since maybe Castle in the Sky or Castle Cal Cagalistro or whatever. Mm. It, it Yeah, no, very much keeping the traditional style is very nice. I also think it How it kind stays of... consistently in the traditional style. Also, I think with just the way he controlled his style is just that like, it's kind of a example of that dream speak of mm. like Irish fiction a little bit, whatever it's called. Like, like there's something very dreamy happening in a world that's very relatable. Well, you're making it sound like a Latin American uh, magical realism. I mean, more like it's like you're like you're watching a dream, sort of like okay, how. Okay. That's another interesting fancy movement, Latin American uh, magical realism. Which the whole idea of magical realism is very interesting. Um, I, heard Bor I think Borges did a lot of good stuff with that, if you're familiar with him. He's an Argentine poet. Uh, I actually am familiar with him. He wrote this uh, He wrote uh, like this incomprehensible short story. Dream Tigers? Uh, no, there's he another one. Yeah, there's another one. I can't remember what it's called. It's called like, the Library or something like that. It's just... It, Library of Babylon? Might be. I don't know. Okay, I think it might be that, but that's I fine. don't remember if there's a second part of it, but it, it is just like, it's basically just describing a place. It's a short story, it's basically just describing like this impossible place. And it's crazy. And it's. Yeah, crazy. yeah. I think you should look into him. 
yeah. there's just fiction on this. Mm. But I think it kind of has an Irish like dream speak kind of thing, like you're watching a dream and or like like that. True, though, I would argue the, the Irish idea of dream speak is a lot more familiar. Like, like uh, I would argue that it's much more yeah. familiar. Kind of an Achillean way, like you have the a mish, a mash up of the familiar and the unfamiliar. At least what me and him try to look for. Well, I, I would say it's I'd say it's more of the otherness breaking over into the common, and then the common Maybe. being elevated by the otherness. Possibly, but um, I think uh, another thing is it's not deep again in a traditional Keeling way. Like a lot of this, my list isn't like determined by Keeling, yeah. but I think it's kind of. There's it's just a rarer film. Like you ever heard of the Japanese concept of ma? Can't say I have. It's the use of silence or blank space in movies. Like there's this scene where um uh Chihiro, which is the main character, and like sort of the villain of the film, No Face, they're like kind of together on a train and it's just like silence and it's like very well recorded. Even if like the actual silence is very well recorded, it's just like Miyazaki is not afraid to use that kind of silence, and I think it's also a great film just because it like it captures like how children think, which kind of goes back to the way Alice in Wonderland is, and just the art design is very dreamy, like so it back is. to that dream speak, and just the fact um, it's kind of a, sort of about maturity, but not not about growing up so much. It's mm. hard. It's and it's just it's, it's incredibly inventive. It's just like you got like. You, it's one of it's like a Gilliam film, a Terry Gilliam film. You just discover new things every time you watch it. Just there's so much going on. Hmm. So that's the spirit of your way. Intriguing. You should really watch that movie. I should. All right for 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 my for my favorite for my favorite animated film, I've gone low brow again. Uh, I, I I chose uh, Disney's 1973 Robin Hood. Uh, yes, in case you're wondering, that is one with the animated foxes. I just, I just really like that movie. I watched it a bunch of times as a kid. Uh, I love, I love the music. The music is just so appropriate, and it's, it's a very charming retelling of a classic legend. It's, it's charming. You know what? What? Um, if there's like a specific story it's based off, because I know like King Arthur, there's like multiple Robin Hood stories. Right. It, it's, it's just sort of the general arc of robin hood it's 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 Which is probably why they did it because like i don't know yeah. if you know this but in hollywood like robin hood and like um king arthur stories are like in the public domain so that's why you see a lot of them along with yeah. Like tarzan yeah it's it, it's you know I, so it's not as far as one like, as taking like, some of the notable incidents they just kind of focus more on the overall arc of robin hood they do have some like the like the splitting sword in the era. stone was like that sword in the stone was like that yeah so i found some things by researching uh this movie it was actually that oh you've outdone me you've yeah, outdone me. i i have actually did a little bit of research on this movie you gotta show me your method um it was called type in things about a uh, robin hood <laughs> disney night so genius i know right uh, so i found that there were um that actually the idea for this movie it started in 1937, but it wasn't made until 1973. So Walt Disney himself came up with it, and it kind of like I, I I don't think it was Walt Disney who came up with it. I don't remember it being Walt Disney. It but was, it was in development heck for about 35 years. Yeah, it it, it was uh, actually when it came out. There was a lot of fighting between the guy who came up with the concept and the uh, the director. They, really? they fought a lot about it. There was an unused alternate ending that sounds pretty awesome. Um, there were a few other things I thought were very interesting. Is that they um, was if they talk about the it's one part where the guy talks. Uh, I forget who it was exactly, but it was somebody who was involved in me was talking about how they came up with like which like well obviously Robin Hood should be a fox. Then Maid Marian should be a fox. So they start, they start going through like showing how they picked out the different animals. So and that's how uh, Nick Wilde's uh, ancestors. Came yes, and, and 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 that and that is how we have Zootopia today, kids. So, I, well, I yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, you can get to talk about the fox instead of the birds and the bees. But like Robin, it was just a movie I like. A lot. It was it, um, 
interesting enough, it received a lot of positive uh, feedback when it first came out, but after that, uh, the the critical feedback has kind of gone downhill after it it's came. Pa- it's part of the Disney Dark Age, so. Which is interesting because that's one of my favorite <laughs> Disney movies. I I I I actually really like that one better than any of the Disney Renaissance ones. I know that's. Well, kind what of... else is there in the Dark Age though? Like you got the Black Cauldron yeah, and Black Cauldron, Sword in the Stone. You have the Aristocats. The Aristocats is a good. Yeah, movie. Bad, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, Everything kind of stagnated in the seventies outside of Art House. I hate to say it. Yeah, no, there, there, there wasn't a whole lot from that era, but I mean, like. Like I, I would probably take the Lion King over the Aristocats, or, <clears throat> and now they're remaking it. So now you're gonna watch it again. No, I'm not. I, I want my lions animated. I don't want, I don't, I don't want photorealistic lions. I want my animated lions. I want my cartoon lions. <laughs> and I am keeping my cartoon lions. And El- Elton John better be on that soundtrack. Hmm. <laughs> So, they probably just have like John Legend or somebody, or Whoopi Goldberg or something. <laughs> she was the hyena. Oh, she was, wasn't she? I forgot. <laughs> John Legend or Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> Again, they're gonna just pick someone out of the hat. What? <laughs> Those are like the last two people I'd ever think of for the Lion King soundtrack. Well. Let's look at this project from another way. Who Who's genius idea was like, hey, do you know what movie really got a remake? The Lion King. That movie stunk. <laughs> who Who was that guy? Or gal. Could be a gal. That's even more... Well, I guess that means we're equally sexist if it... Yeah. Yes. Could, 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 could be a guy or a gal. Even though... See, like, I feel like it'd be more likely to Kathleen be... Kathleen Kennedy. It was a gal. Interesting. Uh, I was gonna say. I was, I was gonna say it would be surprising. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll, I'll 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 leave that doll away where it is. That I'm actually okay with uh, offending Kathleen Kennedy on air. Oh, well, well, well no. What I was what I was gonna say is is I I I expected it to be a guy because I'm thinking I'm thinking because like I'm thinking a guy would be like yeah photorealism pump up the action. Where, and like have no like um empathetic uh sex um like nostalgia towards yeah, it. Right, like, it get like, rid of it like I, I i i would just that's just kind of how i would tend to think because like, i mean i'm the opposite but i i tend to think of other people being that way but, hey they're gonna be a billion dollars richer why not oh boo i like the old version i, I, <laughs> I like the old version now, i'm not saying that they're right they're just that's why they're doing it yeah I, I have a soft spot for the Also, now possibly Chinese people will be on. The, will get to watch it because, uh, for whatever reason, that'd be good. Well, they won't have to watch like the bootleg. For, <laughs> that's, that'd be another episode. Bootleg Chinese stuff. <laughs> bootleg Chinese stuff. Oh, it's sad. It is. Totalitarianism is evil, guys. And and evidently now we see that men and women are equally stupid when it comes to remaking movies. At least the Chinese people can go over to their cousins in, Hol- in uh, Hong Kong and go watch the original Lion King to see that's better. This is true. Uh, hey, hey, you know what? Do, go, go and watch the old... The, if some people are somehow getting this in China, I don't know how they found it or why they'd be watching it. Go watch the old Lion King. We got past the Great Firewall. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder if we can make it past the Great Firewall, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta know somebody like... In the party, show how dumb Americans are. Us is maybe, the example. We are the example. My word. Maybe I'll marry uh, a communist party leader's daughter. Well, that's look at you problem. <laughs> yes, it is. All right. So, yep. For me, it is the Robin Hood. I love the score. Love the animation. But what about that ending that you were talking about? Oh, so basically, in the ending, Robin Hood does get shot. I, I don't remember when he got shot at. Uh, he got shot at from the castle wall when he jumps off. The really? The very end of the movie, he gets shot at multiple times. So in that one, he gets shot, and like he's like in the church, and he's doing really bad. And then King Richard returns. And then there's actually... A, the movie was supposed to be longer. The movie was supposed to be longer. Oh, so he sacrificed himself. Well, he lives. He lives, he lives oh. to see Richard return and then restore... 
uh, restored England, basically. And then see him leave again for the Third Crusade. Wow. And that would, that would have been the end of the movie. It's actually pretty historically accurate from what I've heard. I know. So I, I'm, like, I'm like, cool, that would have been, because it's not a long movie. So I feel like having that would have actually made it really cool. Like, like, like that would have been more historically accurate, and it would have been nifty. Yeah. But apparent, apparently, the director vetoed it. The director vetoed a lot of the original because they couldn't, because they couldn't sell to kids you know, the 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 fox gang shot. Uh, I I I guess I guess that's what it is. Uh, I mean, I I don't know what else. Violence, violence back then. Also, I'm pretty sure they were on a pretty tight budget and time. But, so this probably uh, like represents a pre-production budget of like what they're because it, it was in thirty-five years of production. It five. It was a five million dollar budget. That would be an interesting uh, uh, YouTube episode to do, to do like the un- what Robin Hood was originally going to be. That's really not that much money. What five million? Even, no, it's not. Even it's, even it's in the seventies, that not, that's not much. No. Also, Robin Hood really didn't show his age. I think. I mean, like a lot of a lot of the theatrical movies in the seventies, if they're done right, they don't show because some of the seventies television animation are not age well. Yeah, it has aged well. I, I I I will I will go with you on that one. All right, so shall we move on to the question and answers period of, of our evening? Oh sure. <clears throat> All right, Matthew. This is oddly appropriate. I came up with this earlier today, having no idea what our subject matter would be. It'd be, if you were a ghost, what would you haunt? Oh man, uh, I'm gonna make something up so it doesn't turn into exquisite corpse. <laughs> you don't know what that is. I is it? don't actually know what that is. Let's look it up. Actually, calling it exquisite corpse is also a coincidence upon a coincidence. Quinky dink. Um. A no. Uh, I hope this doesn't get used against a swimming pool, a water park. A water, a water park. park. Why? Because you could be have fun for all of eternity. Okay. And it's open, and you don't have to get cold, so you can play with it in the middle of the winter. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Especially if it's an indoor water park. You could haunt Sahara Sands for the rest of your life. Yes. I would have to live in New Jersey and pay New Jersey taxes, but... You Just know. Philly thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, right. my second option would be uh, Mercer Mansion. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yes. For those of you who don't know, Mercer Mansion is a giant concrete mansion that got turned... Uh, it's just a co- giant concrete mansion. Yeah. It is a weird giant concrete mansion. True story. You have to see it to believe it. And when I say concrete, I mean the entire darn thing is made of concrete. Floors, Thank ceiling, you. the whole champagne. <laughs> it and it is it, it is it's a, it's an unnerving place to be. It it it, it is cuz there there are dead ends and there are crosswalks and there are dead end doors. It's, and there's windows going into other rooms. There's like windows it's going into other rooms. Yeah, it's it, it's like I don't know if you know about like the Winchester Mansion. I'll let you look that up on yourself. The Winchester Mansion. Okay, but I put it's a shame. I think a very good mansion. Yeah, like more like a castle. It's called Fawn Hill. Yeah, it, it could properly be called a castle. It, but it, it reminds me of that, but not to the same level. It's like it's like it reminds me of the, that on a smaller scale. Interesting. So, your question for me, sir. Um, I think I think I wrote this before we were going to do this episode, but um, okay. what would a Cartoon Network show me by you be like? It would involve. I don't know. I'm I, 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 I'm I'm thinking you could do a better version of the Dungeons and Dragons animated show. You mean the one from the, like 1983? Yeah, the whatever. really it, it was like the late 80s. It was it was a it was pretty crappy. <laughs> like like <laughs> it had high points, but it also had a lot of low points. I think it was supposed to teach kids how to like play. 
not even. It was just like it was like lousy animated adventures in the world that Gary Gygax made, kinda. But so let's make money off of Cas of uh, He Man and the Masters of the Universe. Yeah, it was like so. I I I I would do a better version of it. <laughs> instead, of probably, instead of probably have to run during Adult Swim. No oh gosh. You could all have Will Wheaton play the main character. Who insult everybody every time. Always have Will Wheaton play the main character. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? <laughs> Obviously. Well, I'm I'm trying to think. I would actually it'd be a kind of And fun. you'd have an angry video game nerd and uh, everybody you would and Spoonie and every predictable person you'd probably have to have now and Markiplier, who actually is an official voice actor, who actually was in a Mexican Cartoon Network show. I think that's still running. That sounds like a Mexican Cartoon Network problem. Yeah, he's like a half Korean kid who can sing in Spanish. I mean, you gotta hand it to him. Eh, well, you know what? Actually, I, I think it'd be kind of cool to do a. Um, I could definitely see doing it. If it was Adult Swim, I could do like little. I could definitely see based off the adventures of my Pathfinder group. That'd be that. That'd be fun. There'd be no copyright laws for for copying it. Nope. All right, my second question for you. This is a simple yes. one. Hamburgers or hot dogs? Cheeseburgers, of course. I don't know what a hamburger is. What is I'm it? Generation Z. That doesn't exist. See, what? There's just a, a hamburger sandwich? What are you talking about? Is that a reference? No, I'm just talking <laughs> okay. about hamburger sandwiches. So are you going to read my poem now? Like, what was that about? Your poem? No, no. That's your brain talking. My palm. Uh, I don't do poems. I, okay, I read them. You read po Well, that's good. Keep your brain athletic. Poems help with that. <laughs> All right, and your question for me, sir. What is your overall opinion of the Final Fantasy series? I can go uh, reword that for more specific information. Mm, overall opinion of the Final Fantasy series... Okay, maybe narrow that down a little bit for me. Of the newer ones, like the post nine ones. Oh, of the newer ones. Uh... You have been been an inspiration to the world of men's hair products. <laughs> Not a whole lot else. Of to me, modern Final Fantasy is. I, I can't speak for 15, but just generally kind of with the modern ones. And also, I think Final Fantasy XII has, uh, uh, has a lot going for it. Um, <laughs> not 12, 12, 14. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, the latest one, 15 or whatever? Uh, I can't speak for, 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 for uh, 15. And I think 14... Are they making a, a new one? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying I can't speak for 15, but... I, I, but um, for fourteen, that's the MMO one. I, I think they definitely got a, they definitely have a reputation for being style over substance and getting by on their name. Because I, I, I think they stopped innovating. <clears throat> it's to, to 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 me, it seems like a series that is coasting on its success rather than building more success. Did they end with fifteen in twenty sixteen though? I don't think I doubt that's the last one. Hmm. It's Final Fantasy. There's gonna be a Final Fantasy fifteen two. There's gonna be a fifteen three point five. There's gonna. I mean, the, the last the last main series installment is what I meant. I I I don't know. I and doubt your overall, it. And your overall opinion on the pre nine and pre? They were innovative. They helped us find RPG. They helped us define what the RPG video game could be. Even though I think. A lot, even though I think they were rarely considered to be the best at what they did. I think they did like introduce RPGs to the West, maybe to us. Uh, they JRPGs did. The they, they they did. They introduced the JRPG to the West. They gave us a lot of the what we take for granted in RPGs. Final mm -hmm. Fantasy, yeah. but they tried to make it more retro futuristic, so just like medievalist, uh, at least at the point of six. Which I think I think they kind of got. Tied with Earthbound for that same kind of even for one they genre tried to do that because they had with the what? even though because they cause they had they had the war mech and the robots in the first one. Yeah, they stole a lot from us, Studio Ghibli, though. 
the with the sci the sci fantasy though I think in my opinion maybe I think you you are right though they try to innovate with with genre with genre mixing they, 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 they did but then again that 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 genre mixing was not odd in the eighties that, that that was very uh, you look at um early D and D stuff had. Uh, a sort of blending of science fiction and, and fantasy. Like, that's how you get the um, mind flayers. Hmm. Interesting. So it wasn't necessarily uncommon for its time. And Star Wars came all before that, which is its own thing. And Star Wars, which is, which, which, which is Buddhist space boot camp. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, I think that has brought us to the end of our subject matter. Animated <laughs> movies. Love them? Like them? Or... I don't know. Is there anybody who really just hates animated movies for the sake of hating animated movies? I'm sure somebody does. But we've reached the end of our time. We have launched forth our opinions. And we welcome yours. Take the time to follow us on social media. Because we totally check that at regular intervals. All right. One day we will have emails to reply to, though. All right. So, I am Andrew. And Matthew. And we're saying goodnight and happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>